Okay, so we got the Arger stem up here. It's sending 80 RPM into Tuner Studio. Tuner Studio is recording it as 100. That's because I'm using a 24-1 wheel, which is what's in the Kohler engine. If I set it to 36-1, uh, if I put 80 over here, it'd be 80 over there. This is just the way Arju stem works. It's screwy, okay? So uh, why am I sending such low RPMs? Well, it's because I want to see the LEDs flash because I'm trying to get uh, confirmation that uh, all my angles are right. Um, and I will probably make that a different video because I don't want to go through all that right now. But one thing you'll notice is it doesn't say it's cranking down here. It says the engine's running. And uh, that's so that I know that my uh, I've tricked uh, Tuner Studio into thinking the engine's running. It's not cranking so that the uh, spark plugs and the in, uh, Injectors are working the way they're supposed to and not in some cranking mode uh, This has to do with uh, making the LEDs flash a certain way blah 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 So anyhow uh, to do that I went into startup idle cranking settings and I set the cranking rpm at 100 rpms It's normally 400 um, That tricked tuner studio to go from cranking to running and All of this is to get the engine down at the lowest speed I can Okay using arduous tip to where it stays running and not cranking see now it's a cranking because I dropped it all the way down to 60 which is 75 rpm and let's see what happens if I take it to 78 which is still below 100 uh, we're at 96 it still says cranking or oh, no, 97 it still says cranking let's take it up to 81 and it's at 101 now it's running okay and now I can probably back it down, uh, let's try 78, because it's not going to immediately go into cranking just because it dropped below 100. Okay, so we're now we're at 97. The whole purpose here is to slow my LEDs down on my board, okay? So let's go look at those for a second uh, before this video gets too long. So <clears throat> this is the schematic for the Speedwino NO2C no overhang two-channel board. And uh, this is a resistor pack, but the LEDs are laid out on the board just like this. Here's the actual LED. LED 1 is for injector 1. Uh, LED 3 is for injector 2. Um, LED 2 is for uh, ignition uh, 1. And, uh, yeah, ignition 1. And LED 4 is for ignition 2. Okay, so the way they have these LEDs on the board right now so that you can see them is they have uh, 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay, so they have injector 1. Injector 2, spark plug 1, spark plug 2. So as you can imagine, these things are just flashing right now, really slow. I'll look over here and tell you they're going blink, 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 so that you can see them, okay? If the engine's running 1,000 RPMs, these are going to be lit solid. Uh, they're not of any use to you except to say, oh, this one's never lit. There must be a problem. That's why my engine just sounds like it's running on one cylinder, okay? That's the only purpose for the LEDs once it's running. But when you're first setting it up, they could be extremely helpful in diagnosing, am I even close in what I'm saying in my uh, settings of my engine for the crankshaft uh, sensor and uh, the, some other things that I'll show you. Uh, maybe I'll show you in this video. So anyhow, if we just take these two LEDs and physically move them but leave them soldered where they are, we would have injector one, spark plug one, injector two, spark plug two. Now we'd be looking at the cylinder and it would make more sense because we would see blink, blink, pause, blink, blink, pause, blink, blink, pause, blink, blink, pause. And if we don't see that, something's wrong. So they could be extremely helpful if they had just swapped these two LEDs around. Okay, and again, these aren't the LEDs. They're over here. I'm just using this as an example. So I am going to remove the two LEDs, reinstall new ones, and, and not push them all the way in the board, leave their legs long, and put uh, uh, heat shrink tubing around their legs. And then after I've soldered them in place, I'm going to physically bend them and swap their places. So that this becomes a useful tool, okay? Uh, so wh why do I need these LEDs to be there so that I can see the cylinders individually? Well, I think that goes without saying, but we'll go into it here in just a sec. So this is the um, <clears throat> Briggs & Stratton engine. The Kohler's the same way. And what I want you to notice is we're going through 360 degrees of rotation. This one fires and does its thing. Then after it goes all the way around one time, this one fires and does its thing. So it's not, it's not going boom, boom, exhaust, exhaust. It's going boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust. If it went boom, boom, exhaust, exhaust, the thing would really run pretty rough, probably jump right out of the frame. Uh, so uh, what we're trying to figure out here is we need two pieces of information about the geometry of this engine in order to make any of this begin to work, okay? So 
if we go over to uh, Tuner Studio, okay, and uh, now we've got our LEDs swapped and we're running really low RPM and it says cranking now. It can't say that. It has to say running. So we're going to have to boost it up to uh, 81 RPM, okay, and we're at 101. Now it says running. Okay, now we're good to go, okay, because it thinks the engine's running. That means it's not doing anything funky with the injectors or spark plugs trying to start the engine. It thinks it's running. Okay, so... There are two things that we have to get set, uh, and they have to be set right, okay, in order to have a chance of making this thing work. There's a lot of other stuff, but, you know, we've got a 24-1 wheel, and we've said the trigger angle is 180, okay? And that's probably not right, but that's what we're putting in here for right now. And I'll tell you what this is. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you right now so we don't get too far ahead. So, in the book, uh, in the book, it states that... The gap from the missing tooth creates an interrupted signal. That's on the 24-1 uh, wheel. So it's got 24 teeth. One's missing. There's a gap. And it tells us what we already know, that the gap, you know, interrupts it. And it says that that gap corresponds to a specific crankshaft position near bottom dead center for cylinder one, which is 180 degrees from top dead center. Now, an important thing here is it doesn't tell us where the crankshaft position sensor is. If it's at the bottom, then 180 is pretty close. If it's uh, uh, somewhere else, then it's something else. So let's go look at uh, our engine again. Not this. I want my engine. Okay, so when this cylinder is at top dead center, the gap in this toothed wheel, where it's missing a tooth, is all the way at the bottom at 180 degrees. Now, if the crankshaft position sensor is down here, then our angle is 180. Uh, all they're telling us is where the gap is. What they haven't told us is where the crankshaft position sensor is. It could be anywhere, anywhere on this wheel, okay? And uh, so we got to kind of visually identify where it is and, and get our numbers a little bit closer, which is the next thing I need to do. Let's just say that I find it's over here um, at 90 degrees on this wheel. And so regardless of where this gap is, um, we're going to be interested in this over here, not this over here, okay? Uh, so th that's really not telling us anything about where this... The, the relation of the top dead center to the gap. So, except that we kind of firm up our, our, our suspicions that if we know it's down there and that we have to go down on the piston 90 degrees in the crank to get closer to it, then we say, oh yeah, it was definitely over here and now it's over here. Okay, so we know that. Uh, what uh, Tuner Studio and Speed, Speed Wheel want to know is once it gets to this crankshaft position sensor, the gap's there, the very next tooth okay, that's, it's going to encounter as it rotates. Where, how far does the engine have to turn around in the 360 degrees from this point in order for this cylinder to be a top dead center, okay? Well, if it was a bottom dead center down here at 180, it has nowhere to go but up. So as we turn it 90 degrees, okay, it gets to the crankshaft position center, but the piston's only halfway up. And so now it continues around to here, and it makes it to the top. That means it had to go 90 degrees to get to top dead center, and uh, that's our important number. Conversely, if we find out that they told us that uh, that gap's down here and the crankshaft position's down here, sensor, okay, then it has to go 180 degrees to get to the top, and 180 is our number. What if it's over here? Well, then it's got to go 270 degrees, okay, and that's our number. And uh, that number's not going to be perfect. We're going to fine-tune that later, but we're trying to get close to what is the number. It could be here, and it's 45 degrees to get to top dead center. It could be here, and that would be 315 degrees to get to top dead center. Okay, you get the point? We've got to find out where the crankshaft position sensor is, where the gap is, and then kind of get a guess as to what this angle is. So there is value in them telling us that it's at 180 because we know at top dead center, that thing's about down here, and if our crankshaft position sensor is over here at about 90, we know we got to rotate it about 90 degrees to get close to it, and... Uh, you know, then it would take another 90 degrees. We don't care about the first 90. It'd take another 90 degrees to get up here. From the uh, crankshaft position sensor at 270 to 360 is 90 degrees. And that's the number we need that's really important in order to even attempt to move forward on this. I am assuming it's at 180, but in the example I just quoted you, we would change this to 90. Okay, but I'm going to leave it at 180 because I don't know where the crankshaft position sensor is. Okay? So that's the first important number that we need to know. All right, let's go back to our video so I can show you this, okay? So as we watch this engine crank around, <clears throat> okay, so now it's at 180 as far as the gap, 
okay and it's going up it's exhausting like this video is now it's doing intake then it's going to do compression and fire okay And we're going to take it all the way up to zero degrees. It's our, you know, it would have fired and boom. Okay. So it's a top dead center now. It had already fired. It's getting ready to go down. But pay attention to where this, this uh, piston rod's at. Okay. So this piston is uh, in some other mode. It's not in compression. It's in uh, exhaust probably. Uh, as we allow this to go 90 degrees to the right. Okay, uh, now this piston's at top dead center, okay? So don't worry about all that stuff we just talked about. We've already done that setting. We don't care about that setting anymore. That setting was just for this piston. We're trying to get the setting for this piston now, okay? The setting for this piston is going to use the previous information we gathered, okay, to set this piston. We don't care what that number is. You don't need to know that. What you need to know is the number we're going to set here is based on zero degrees with this being a top dead center. So the question it's asking is, in order for this piston to get the top dead center based on this one being at zero, what's the number? Well, there's two different numbers you could use, okay? We could say, well, it's 90 degrees, okay? Well, if we tell it 90 degrees, you know what's going to happen? This engine's going to run this way. It's going to go... Boom, boom, exhaust, exhaust, boom, boom, exhaust, exhaust, boom, boom, exhaust, exhaust. And this could be one rough running engine. What we want it to do is go boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust, so it runs smoother, okay, because that's the way it's designed to run. And that's the way the camshaft's set up. It would take a totally different camshaft to make it to run the other way anyhow, so you'd never have a chance of getting it to run the wrong way. But it's obviously not 90 degrees because you can't go from uh, spark plug fire, turn 90 degrees and go spark plug fire. It's got to be the other phase, okay? So what do we got to do to get there? Well, we got 90 to get here, so we got to go 360 degrees more, right? So that's 450. That's where the 450 number comes in. So uh, we go over to uh, Tuner Studio and we click on engine constants. And there's two things we have to do. <clears throat> First of all, Almost all the engines are even fire, right? Well, we got to make ours odd fire because of this weird thing going on with this. Uh, the fact, the, the reason we have to do this, just to make sure you understand this, it's because they both share a common crankshaft journal. It's not because they're 90 degrees. If they had two different crankshaft journals, one dedicated to this uh, rod, one dedicated to this rod, and the uh, timings were different, then it could be an even fire engine. But because they're sharing the same connecting rod, it can't possibly be an even firing engine. It's got to be odd. By clicking on odd, we now get this box down here, which was grayed out, okay? And if I had uh, three, uh, where is it? If I had three cylinders or four cylinders, I'd get more boxes down here to set up weird angles for this weird engine, okay? But it's only two cylinder. Uh, if I change it back to even fire, this box gets grayed out. Once I made it odd fire, it's because it's not 360, 180, or whatever, uh, it's 450, okay? So I've got to put 450 in here, and that tells some very important information to the uh, ECU. In the first step, we told it the answer to the question for trigger angle is 180. This engine, uh, once the first tooth after the gap hits the crankshift position sensor, which on, in this uh, example we're assuming is at 180 degrees, um, then at 180, the piston is at uh, top dead center, okay? And we're assuming the crankshaft position sensor is there also. So what would it take, or at bottom dead center, I'm sorry. And then what would it take to get that piston to top dead center, the number one cylinder, to take 180 degrees of rotation, okay, from the crankshaft position sensor and the first tooth after the gap. So it's the first tooth after the gap, the crankshaft position sensor. We've got to get the piston to top dead center. It'll take 180 degrees. And again, if that... Uh, crankshaft position sensor is located not at 180 but at 270 on the left hand side then it's going to be 90 degrees here okay but we're trying to get a ballpark so that we can move forward and perfect this okay so that's where the 180 comes from uh, then when we get to this next setting for the engine constants it doesn't care about the 180 it assumes you did that and got it right so it's using zero as a reference the first uh, number one piston's at uh, top dead center that's zero 
what do I got to do to get the number two cylinder into the firing position you want with a top dead center, okay? Well, again, if we made it 90, because it's 90 degrees off, we'd have boom, boom, exhaust, exhaust, boom, boom, exhaust, exhaust. So we got to make it 450. So it goes boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust, boom, exhaust. Okay. So these two numbers are probably right. However, I've got to find out where the crankshaft position sensor is to firm this up and make adjustments before I do anything. Now, with that said, and I thought I was going to make multiple videos, but it sure does look like I'm going down the road to the... <laughs> One, one big long one. With that said, uh, once I have that information, um, what am I going to do next? Okay, so we go out and we take the spark plugs out of the engine, okay, and we hook a timing light up. And before I do that, I try and find out if there's a um, existing top dead center mark on this engine somewhere. Get the engine to top dead center for the number one cylinder, and then somewhere convenient uh, where it's easier to do, like the fan housing on the top, make a mark for zero degrees. Uh, top dead center of piston one. Then with the spark plugs out, uh, we will crank the engine with the timing light and uh, observe that mark. And if it's left or right of that mark, we will go over to uh, the trigger setup and we will adjust that 180, okay, to 179, 178, or 181, 182, whatever it takes to move that mark and get it lined up perfectly. In order to do that, we've got to do something else. We've got to go over here and we've got to tell it to lock the ignition timing so it doesn't use any of these maps. And we've got to fix the angle. This is normally 10 or 15 or 20. I've changed it. We need it to be zero because we want that timing light to go on regardless of all the fuel maps, ignition maps, and all that stuff. We want it to lock on at zero degrees while we're cranking. you got to make sure you change this back when you're done if you're actually going to run the engine. Okay. So we'll do that. Get number one all timed up. Get the correct number over here in the trigger setup, okay, and find out that it's really 87 degrees, or it's 178, or it's 43, whatever it ends up being. We'll get this locked down, and now we have number one perfect. The next thing we got to do is the same thing for number two, okay? Well, to do number two, I need another timing mark, okay? And uh, using my, uh, you know, geometry I just looked at, we're pretty sure it's 450, okay? So uh, that means we need to have a mark 90 degrees away from the other timing uh, mark on one side or the other. So you'll have to just figure it out, spin the engine around, and then go another 90 degrees in your mind. <clears throat> Get a timing mark there. Then do the same thing. Put the timing light on number two. Make sure you have the spark thing set right you know, up in, in Tuner Studio, and then crank it. And then uh, observe it. And um, if it's left or right, start adjusting this number. Okay, you don't have to mess with the other one because if you mess with the other one, you'll throw the whole thing out of whack. You'll be chasing this thing forever. You come over here and you fix this. Now, once we have these two numbers nailed down, the timing is fixed. It should be perfect. And then we can move on with uh, maybe attempting to start the engine.